I'm standing here with three Dell PowerEdge systems in our lab, and two are very special. Two are hyperscale PowerEdge servers, and we're gonna get into that. And one's a standard PowerEdge enterprise server. And if you look at this pile in front of me, unless you're a Dell aficionado, you probably don't notice the difference between these three servers. This is an R760, this is an HS5610, this is an HS5620. These two, the HS indicates hyperscale servers. That's the new line of servers dedicated to hyperscalers, cloud service providers and those uh, large app hosters that we'll get into a little bit more. Of course, the R760, your standard PowerEdge enterprise server. What differentiates these servers is not as much as you might think, and the hyperscale server line is something that's really important to Dell going forward. Now, to be clear, these hyperscale servers are not for everyone, and what Dell has done is they've put it together a build of materials that's very specific for their use cases. And when we think about who Dell's trying to target with these servers, of course it's going to be the hyperscalers in, in mass, but it goes much deeper than that. So Dell's identified about a thousand customers that fit into this target use case all across the world. And this would include all of your regional CSPs. Like in Cincinnati, we've got a couple pretty big ones that would qualify for this program. But there's also a world of application designers and developers that sell their services on a monthly recurring basis. Those guys look and act a lot like a cloud service provider or a hyperscale customer as well. They're included in this Dell hyperscale program and uh, can take advantage of these specific servers. The HS5610 and 5620 both run on Intel Z unscalable CPUs. Our configs are two CPUs in each one of these platforms. You can do a single SKU if you want. Uh, plenty of DDR5 in these systems, again, tuned to what this hyperscale audience wants, and all sorts of other features we're gonna dive into a little bit further with Kevin, who's gonna show you some of the core differences between the Enterprise PowerEdge R760 and what you get in the HS models. But I wanna be real clear here, this is more than just hardware, just PowerEdge servers, and I don't mean to diminish the hardware at all, but Dell's done so much more that's really important to understand. They've got this entire program that's an overarching umbrella over these servers and the solutions that they enable for their customers. That's called Dell Hyperscale Next. Dell's Hyperscale Next program gives customers so much more than just the hardware. They get a whole suite of consultative services with a plethora of experts around application engineering, hardware engineering, because now you're not just buying servers to solve an application need in your data center, you're getting the whole backing of Dell Technologies and their Hyperscale Next program, which goes so much deeper than that to make sure that new technologies are being adopted when appropriate, and that you're putting in the right NICs, the right storage, the right configurations of servers to meet your needs. Beyond the Hyperscale Next consultative process to make sure that customers are getting the right versions of these servers, Dell also delivers them at the right time. Dell's prioritized these systems and they've actually worked with Intel on the supply chain and logistics side to make sure that these servers and these CPUs and all the other core components ship extremely quickly. Dell doesn't commit to a specific timeline on their website when talking about these hyperscale servers, but we know that these configurations ship very quickly and what we're talking about is weeks, not months. And we're not just talking about two or three of these things. These are rack scale solutions, hundreds of servers or thousands in an order that Dell can deliver very, very quickly. They've got a huge logistical advantage with these servers, and that's critical in delivering value to the CSPs and hyperscalers that need reliable solutions, but also a dependable supply chain to get that done. In addition to logistics, Dell's got another major advantage for this targeted audience, and that's around security. The HS5610 and 5620 have a number of major security advantages that are unrivaled by a lot of the white box competitors in this category. Of course, Dell has data at rest encryption with SCDs with local or external key management. The servers also offer secure boot and a cryptographically signed firmware to ensure that only trusted software and firmware are loaded during the server startup. This also includes secure component verification so that the server knows at boot what's supposed to be in here and what's digitally signed for other things like secure array, silicon root of trust, secure system lockdown, which uh, works with iDRAC9 Enterprise, a number of uh, TPM certifications that are all really important. Of course, much of this comes from Dell's heritage in the enterprise server space with Dell PowerEdge, and they've carried that forward to these systems. It's not just security that gets carried forward in these platforms from the enterprise Dell PowerEdge servers. I'd mentioned iDRAC in the security conversation. iDRAC is in these systems too, so both the HS5610 and 5620 benefit from enterprise-grade management of these systems. 
Now, iDRAC's full of benefits, including remote access, setting up profiles, managing uh, BIOS, firmware, all sorts of other things. And we're gonna dive into that a little further next. But here's one other really cool thing about these servers. Dell is also embracing OpenBMC. Dell calls this Open Server Manager, and it gives customers a choice. If you want iDRAC in that enterprise deep feature set, and that's relevant to your business, go that way. If you want OpenBMC because that fits better with what you do, and you're embracing that in your business, you can go that way too. Kevin's gonna dive in more deeply with a look at, at uh, OSM and iDRAC on these systems, and we'll get into a little bit more of the differences there. Now, another really unique thing about the hyperscale systems from Dell, they can be equipped with both iDRAC 9 or Open Open Server Manager, which is based on OpenBMC. Now, in our lab, we've leveraged the uh, iDRAC uh, environment quite a bit. This is showing uh, iDRAC on one of our uh, HS 5610s that we've had in the lab for a while. It looks identical to what you find on an R760, for example. This allows you to uh, drill into the hardware attached on the system. Uh, in, in many cases, you can configure physical disks, you can create uh, virtual disks. Beyond just storage, you can also drill into uh, BIOS options. So in here, you can drill down to BIOS settings, and you can start adjusting how the uh, CPU is configured the same way you do it through logging to a KVM console, attaching to the system, changing the settings, rebooting the hardware. But you can do all of these things from iDRAC. And then you can also push profiles on the system. So say you have 50 servers that are equipped in the, uh, with the same hardware, you get the same settings across all of them. You can do those things inside iDRAC. Let's say you don't need that level of management in your environment and you're more used to leveraging OpenBMC. OpenBMC can be quite useful. Uh, we've used it across a lot of servers that we've had in our lab. The main difference compared to uh, iDRAC though is its look and feel is more open and generic. It's not gonna be the same type of vibe you're gonna get from a uh, iDRAC experience. Now to show you what it uh, looks like, this is how Dell's configured Open Server Manager. You get the same look and feel you'd find from iDRAC, although it's a wrapper on top of OpenBMC. Now with that said, you can still manage the hardware. You can still work with uh, the KVM side. You can still uh, switch the system on and off, but the granularity of drilling into BIOS options, you're not gonna find that from OpenBMC, but you're gonna still find it very useful in other ways. You still have the same ability to power the system on and off. You can still interact with it uh, the way you'd lever uh, leverage OpenBMC including KVM. So in, a, in the case where uh, we were using our other system to uh, adjust bio settings, you can still do that through the KVM. OpenBMC has its own strengths and weaknesses. They're different than iDRAC strengths and weaknesses, but it really comes down to what you want to deploy in that uh, hyperscale environment. Overall, it's nice that Dell offers both of these options for different customers, depending on what their unique requirements are. Next up, Kevin's gonna take a deeper look at some of this hardware and show you some of his favorite parts of the HS5610 and the HS5620 and how those compare to the Enterprise Power Edge line with this R760. Before we get there though, it is worth noting that we've got the standard 1U HS5610. There's a cold aisle serviceable version of this as well that takes much of the stuff in the back, puts it around to the front, and gives customers that want to do cold aisle serviceability an option there. So as we dive into both these platforms side by side, we have the traditional R760 on the left and the HS5620 on the right. As we can see, there's a little bit different spacing on the uh, CPUs, the R760. You get a wider space, and that's because they use a complement of 32 uh, DDR5 DIMM slots. On the HS5620, it's half the number of RAM slots, so you have eight per a, uh, CPU instead of 16 on the R760. Additionally, you can see there's a bit of a condensed layout on the uh, PCI slots. So on the R760, you see that there are uh, three visible risers. There's one small riser beneath uh, riser three. And each of these, uh, th each of these uh, three risers gives you the ability to mount in two full height uh, PCI cards each. And then the uh, middle one is a uh, half height card. On the HS5620, they're all half height card slots. So you have uh, two here, two here, and another two in this uh, riser. It's really designed for a different subset of devices that are traditionally half-height uh, cards. The R760 is going to see more of a wide range of uh, devices. It's more the bread and butter of the enterprise side, and that's where you have a little more flexibility there. On both systems, you have access to uh, BOSS. It's located here on the R760, and it's also externally accessible on the HS5620 here. Now. Uh, as you notice, there's a, a little bit of a difference on the uh, fan setup as well. 
It's kind of funny. So on the R760, you see all silver grade fans. On the HS5620, though, you have five of the uh, six fans as uh, silver grade and one gold. Now, it's not a misplaced fan. You have a bit of a stronger fan here in the event that you have the uh, rear mount uh, U.2 drives uh, in the back. And that gives you additional storage capabilities, but it also explains why there's a little bit of an imbalance on how it handles its uh, cooling architecture. Beyond that, there's a lot of familiar pieces between both these platforms, and it really comes down to what devices are going to be installed in these. The heatsink structures on both these systems are designed to be a little bit different. The R760 is designed for a higher class of CPU. These go above 32 cores. The HS5620 right now caps out at 32 cores. That's a licensing item, not on the Dell side, but a lot of the software deployments these go into will have restrictions on anything above 32 cores. Uh, require two CPU license, so to limit the impact of that, these systems just are designed for 32 cores and uh, below CPUs. Now as we position the HS5610 on the left and the HS5620 on the right, you can see they both leverage the same motherboard and similar layout. We get uh, larger heat sinks on the um, HS5620, the HS5610 gets shorter heat sinks, it fits inside a 1U chassis. And then as we look towards the uh, back of the case, the spot where the additional storage can be added on the HS5620 becomes the uh, area where the power supply is located on the 1U chassis. And then there is a bit of a subtle difference when it comes to the uh, riser layout. We have the rear accessible boss card on the HS5620. It's internally accessible on the HS5610. In the event you have two drives and the boss drives in the back, the risers would become six slots on the HS5620 and become three slots on the HS5610. So there are some differences in terms of density between these two different models. It really comes down to what you want to deploy in your specific environment. We all know that there are a lot of giant hyperscalers that can control their own software stacks, their own hardware builds, and use an OCP-esque model for deploying their infrastructure. But that world isn't attainable or even desirable for a whole world of other hyperscalers cloud service providers and software developers. Those organizations need other ways to take advantage of technology and they need a partner to help them do that. Dell's got a very unique program here, not just with the hardware in front of me, but the Hyperscale Next program. The Dell Hyperscale Next program makes sure that the applications the customers are running on this hardware are successful and that the hardware is deployed and tuned for those applications. What it comes down to is for the thousand or so Dell customers that they've identified that are great targets for these platforms, Dell's trying to give them a competitive advantage to go win deals, to go build their business and not worry about infrastructure so much. Dell wants to make sure that these customers get a competitive advantage and that they run their business effectively with really minimal OpEx hit in terms of managing PowerEdge servers. The Hyperscale Next program is an absolute game changer. There's nothing else that we're aware of like that. We've got a whole deep dive on this. I'll link to it in the uh, description below. You can check that out. We're also linking to a bunch of Dell resources and assets. If you're operating a data center at scale, if you're a hyperscaler, CSP, or run a large application, you want to learn about this program. We've got a link in the description below to check it out. I think it's worth exploring and understanding what Dell PowerEdge Hyperscale servers can do for your business.